Hi, I'm Mike Owner of the In Group in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to do a review and comparison of the biggest selling album of all time, Michael Jackson's Thriller. I'm going to be going over the best sounding versions of this album on vinyl. I've essentially narrowed it down to some of the top picks. There are really only a few that are worth your consideration, and those are the ones we're going to go over. Uh, this is an album that I've been waiting to do a review on for some time, but I want to wait till the 40th anniversary, till the new Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs UltraDisc One Step came out, because I wanted to include that in this shootout video. So today is the day, it is here, and I am going to do a little mini review slash shootout of this record. I'm going to start off with some things you should avoid. I left a few records at the house, or at the store, and I cannot show them to you, but a record that you should avoid is the original Japanese master sound. That is a digital master and used with very primitive digital technology, and is not a very good sounding record. Another copy that I would avoid is just the modern $20 version you'd buy in the record store today. There are better sounding copies for around the same money, and I'll go over those later. Probably the worst offender that is maybe ever to come out is this right here. This is Michael Jackson 25. This is the 25th anniversary edition of Thriller. And this is a god-awful sounding record. They could have hired me to master this album, and I would have done a significantly better job than this. I am not sure what the hell was going on here. I don't know if their source material was a 1980s 8-track, uh, maybe a Columbia House reel-to-reel -reel cassette tape. I don't know what's going on here. This is just really an atrocious sounding record. Uh, it has bonus tracks on it. It's got Kanye West, Fergie, Will I Am, collabs, remixes. I don't really care for anything about this record. It is absolutely horrible. It is offensive that I've actually been saving this record in my collection for so long to actually do this thrill, thriller shootout. And I can't actually wait till this shootout is done. It cannot come soon enough to where I can actually take this record out of my house and move it on to somebody else. <laughs> Feel bad about doing it, but watch my video. I'm going to put it in the store. It's going to be for sale. I don't recommend you buying it. But I can't tell you what to do with your money. This is not a good sounding record. Uh, it is smashed two bits. The compression on this is so bad, it is unlistenable. There is no dynamic range on this, and all of the instruments in this record are lifeless. Okay, from there, let's move on to the original audiophile record of this album, and that is the CBS master sound. So this is also not a very particular good sounding record. One of the problems that this record sounds from is it has a little less compression than the original. It has more detail than the original as far as you can hear more things going on in the mix. It's a little bit more engaging in that sense, but everything sounds off. The instruments don't sound like what they're supposed to sound like. Uh, it doesn't have a natural sound to it. I know it's an often used, overused term in the audiophile world. It was muddy. It sounded like there was blankets over my speakers. It just sounded to me bad. It just, it was lifeless. It was, you could tell what was going on. There was more going on, but it just didn't sound very good. Uh, and this is not a very inexpensive album. A clean copy of this will run you almost a hundred bucks. So there's really no reason to own this. It's not particularly good sounding. Uh, there's many better sounding versions of it. The only reason you would own it, like the reason I own it, is if you're an audiophile completist, you like audiophile records or CBS Master Sound and you collect the label, you make a run and collect them all and you have to end up putting this one in your record collection. But like a lot of 80s audiophile records, this is not particularly very good. Okay, now we're going to move on very quickly to the better sounding versions of this record. And the reason we can say that uh, we're moving on to the better sounding versions of this album because the original version of this album was mastered extremely well. It was done by the legendary Bernie Grunman. Uh, 
and it sounds spectacular. This is the Japanese variation of that. Sounds identical to the Bertie Grunman mastering. There's no notation on the dead wax to signify it's Bernie. The original doesn't have it as either. There's really no information on the dead wax to signal that this is actually uh, unique or it was cut in America. If it not been for the fact that you listen to it and it sounds pretty much exactly like other variations, US pressings of this album cut by Bernie Grunman, you wouldn't really know, but just using my ear, I'm assuming that this was cut by Bernie Grunman. It is listed as cut by Bernie Grunman. It sounds unlike pretty much any 80s Japanese record you would buy, which is baseless, lifeless in the low end, and over embellished in the upper end. And it sounds pretty much identical, if not identical, to the Bernie Grunman mastering US pressing. Why would you own this? Well, a lot of times you own these Japanese records because they have really quiet vinyl. You know, the quality is better, but that's really not the case in, you know, for me here because a lot of the original American first pressings sound spectacular as far as vinyl quality goes. If you find a clean copy, and let's be honest, it's the best selling album of all time. There's no more copies. There's no more copies of any other album on vinyl in the world than this one. So you really shouldn't have a too difficult time finding this record. Now, maybe it's not the dollar record it used to be. Maybe it'll cost you 20 bucks, 25 bucks for a clean original. But I don't really see a need for the Japanese copy here at this point. I mean, it's a novelty as far as you get the Obi. No reason for the Japanese copy. And that brings me to the original US first pressing. I've got multiple copies. This album was done many times. The true US first pressing doesn't actually list Michael Jackson on the back as uh, a co-producer. If you look on the back here, you only got two lines of credit, okay? If we go to a little bit later of an album, like I got, not here, Here's a slightly later version. You can see the hype sticker on there kind of specifies that this now has Smash Hits, Billie Jean, Need It, Want to Be Starting Something, The Girl Is Mine, Human Nature. It's really only missing Thriller, which was the seventh single, I believe, that was on, seventh and last single. I want to say, what, eight out of ten of these out tracks charted? What is there, ten tracks on the album? I want to say eight were top ten hits. Thriller was the last one to be released almost a year after the album came out. And you can kind of get gauge that a little bit by that hype sticker. Pretty much specifying at this point in time, there's a lot of hits on this record, right? And if you look on the back, you will actually see produced by Quincy Jones, for Quincy Jones Productions, co-produced by Michael Jackson which is actually fairly accurate. Michael Jackson, some of the stuff that are, is on this album, musically, is very close to Michael Jackson's original demos, and he should have got credit for it. Uh, that wasn't really the case early on, but I think that's something that kind of Michael maybe fought for. I don't know the whole story on or why it was changed, but if you l listen to some of the original demos of these recordings and how they progressed, some of them heavily benefited from Quincy's production. Man, was a genius. Some of them were very, very close to what Michael Jackson put out demo and then polished off in the studio. Okay, let's talk about this. I've listened to many, many copies of this record over time, right? Many, many copies of this record over time. It is an unbelievably so good sounding record, okay? It's a dance record. It's compressed because it's a dance record and it thumps. I want to if you listen to certain tracks, let's take Billie Jean, for instance, right? Smash hit, probably the... Uh, it's tough to even say it's the song of the album because there is so many the songs of this album, okay? Uh, if you listen to that track, you listen to the original Bernie Grunman cut, you get the bass, you get the kick drum as kind of the main driver of the song. And a lot of that... I think is due to the fact that it is compressed and it was compressed because it was an 80s dance record. It was a record 
to dance to, and it was kind of mastered accordingly. So there's a lot more compression on this than, for instance, the Mobile Fidelity, which we'll talk about next. Mobile Fidelity is cut wildly different. There's a lot more compression on this album, okay? So I'm going to talk about both of these kind of in unison. This is the Michael Jackson Thriller One Step that just came out. Now the thing is with this is this is mastered quite a bit different. It's mastered lower. The Bernie Grundman is cut hotter. The Bernie Grundman cut kind of thumps, meaning it has a very natural rhythmic drive to it. But it loses, due to compression, a significant amount of detail of what is present on, according to this, the original 30 IPS analog half-inch master tape. And you can hear this better on certain tracks than others. Listen to the Mobile Fidelity one step against the original Bernie Grumman cut on tracks. First of all, the ballads are very, it's very noticeable on the ballads. But listen to it on tracks like PYT. Uh, listen to it on tracks like Billie Jean. The album kind of spreads out a lot more on the Mobile Fidelity one step. My initial reaction when I heard this at Mobile Fidelity when I was there over the summer is this is going to sound better than anything that has ever come out. But I wanted to, and I based that reaction off of like listening to the album and hearing the way Michael's voice is on the center stage, the way the background was lively and there was things going on and it wasn't just a kick drum and the bass, how there were so many more things prominent in the mix that you could hear. But I wanted to save that judgment until I had it here in my listening room and I can compare on my own equipment back and forth on my Wilsons, on the VTLs between the original and the one step. My initial thinking though in Sebastopol was the one step was going to be the clear winner. And I think that is the case here. I really truly feel that this is the best sounding version of Michael Jackson's Thriller you can buy. Now, I want to describe it a little bit more in detail. I don't want to just say this is, I listened to this record and this is the best thing ever. You should go buy this. It is mastered in a different fashion. It is a pretty wildly different approach and take on this album than the original. There's more detail in this album, a lot more detail. I was listening to this album last night at great length. My son, who's 14 years old, who's a fantastic musician, one that I'll, at 14, I couldn't achieve if I studied the guitar the rest of my life. And he hears things that I never had the natural ability to hear, whether it's tunings that are off key, off, you know, the minutia that I wish I was able to hear. When things are off key, when things are slightly out of pitch, uh, you know, that, 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 that amount of detail he can hear. And I sat him down before he was going to bed last night. He's like, I got to go to school. What do you want? I'm like, let's, let's listen to this record. And I'm not telling him what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. I said, I want to just listen to you to listen to two different records. And I want you to tell me what you think of them and which one you prefer put on a couple of tracks. He's a guitar player, so I put on, of course, uh, Beat It. I put on PYT, and I played them back and forth, and he preferred the original in every single case. I mean, I didn't tell him what it was. I volume matched everything with my DB meter. I had it precisely matched. He doesn't know squat about records. He doesn't know what he's picking, and he liked the original every single time. And I asked him, you know, what do you like about the original? He goes, I don't, you know, I like how everything is more on the same plane and more in your face. I don't like the other one because, you know, you got things coming from everywhere. You got instruments coming from everywhere. And he kind of described it as being disconjointed and all over the place as far as the instruments, you know, where the original, everything was like right here. Whereas this one, everything was right here. But he liked that. I mean, that's what he was describing. 
Well, he likes it. I don't know. I mean, he's not an audiophile. He's not listening to anything other than his iPhone. So that's his, but that's what he, descri he described it like that. And I thought to myself, you know, that's an extremely accurate description because due to compression, the original is like right here in heavy and in your face. And this, the mobile fidelity doesn't have that vibe. It is a very wide sound stage with Michael like up here and everything else kind of a supporting cast. I'm gonna point you to a few things if you were to buy this album that I think you should listen to on this album. Listen to the bass and the kick drum in relationship to everything else on Billie Jean and also listen to the tail end of PYT. Listen to the vocals, that robotic sound, how it sounds on the original versus how it sounds on the newest pressing, the Mobile Fidelity One Step, and listen to the other instruments. Place them on the soundstage. Listen to what each thing sounds like. If you start with the Mobile Fidelity, you can mentally pick off these instruments in your mind, and then when you move to the original, it becomes harder because things are more compressed. Now, I'm not saying the original is a bad sounding record. Now, now, if I was not sitting in my listening room and I was on, a, say, a dance floor, I would say, like, this is the one you want to be listening to because, I mean, this, like, it hits you in your chest. But you're missing everything else that's going on. This Mobile Fidelity One Step, they really hit this out of the park. This is a special record in the sense that it almost sounds like a remix. And I always think it's cool when you can master a record in such a way that it comes off as a remix. And you think to yourself, well, like, did they remix that album? The one step Marvin Gaye was very similar to where it actually comes off almost like a remix. And you wonder to yourself, like, what's going on here? Why don't anything, you know, why don't the other versions of this record sound like that? So that's the case here. Now, I will say this when I was in Mobile Fidelity uh, over the summer, they showed me video of them actually doing the transfer at Sony video of your tape machine rolling at 30 IPS tape. You could see the splices rolling by. I mean, it was cool. You could see that it wasn't a remix. They were pulling this from a two track master, uh, but it comes off in such a way that it sounds like a remix. I think this is actually mastered also in a way that is different than a lot of mobile fidelity records. A lot of people talk about the mobile fidelity record, how sound, how they're bottomy, you know, they're boomy. This, because of that lack of compression, doesn't have that. It has a more even keel sound. It still thumps. I mean, when you're listening to Billie Jean, it'll still, I mean, those whacks are prevalent, but you can hear everything else that's going on in the mix as well. Now, I know I'm a little earlier than everybody else as far as getting the record, but when you guys start getting this record rolled out to you, I'm going to be curious of what you guys think about it. I'm also going to be doing a listening party in the store here real shortly. I'll post it as a standalone post in the community section here on YouTube of when I'm going to do it. I want to invite people into the store. And I want to see if you guys can pick off what I'm hearing. I'm sure you can. This doesn't seem like something that requires expert listening ability or specialized equipment. I think even the most modest system, you're gonna hear a significant difference. But I think this has a fresher sound because of it. It doesn't have the 80s sound to it. Now it's still an 80s record and it's heavily synth and I mean, you get all that, right? But it doesn't have that 80s mastering sound to it. So for me, it's nice because this is like a fresh take on an 80s record. It's a little less 80s sounding, if that makes any sense. Still 80s sounding, but a little less 80s sounding because it's not smashed. Uh, in my opinion, you really only truly need two versions of this record. The Mobile Fidelity One Step, in the original Bernie Grenman pressing, which can be had very, very inexpensively. Everything else is so far, so wildly subpar that there's no need to have it. And this is the rare occasion where like you can have an exceptionally sounding record, very inexpensive because again, it is the number one selling album of all time, of all time. It can be had cheap. You can get a great sounding version of this. My number two, the Bernie Grumman, you can get a great sounding version of this 
for very little money. You can find them at Goodwill. You can find them at yard sales. They're pretty easily identifiable. Keep in mind, you're going to go through a lot of rough copies because a lot of people play this album to death. A lot of them that come into the store are beat. They're Q-burned. They were sampled to death. But there is a lot of them out there, and there's a lot of good ones to be found. But if you want a kind of a different experience, if you want to kind of listen to this album and hear things in a soundstage that you never heard before, I suggest the Mobile Fidelity One Step. I think it really is a dynamite-sounding record. I thought that the minute I heard it, but now that I got it in the house and on my system, my suspicions have been confirmed. All right, guys, check us out online on our website at www.theingroove.com. Until next time.